So, what's your one and done game that you desperately wish got a sequel? Mine is Gladius, but this game is a very close second. <laughs> Armed and Dangerous, one of Microsoft's first ever exclusive titles for their Xbox console, it later being ported in a semi-stripped down manner to PC. I say stripped down because the Xbox version of this game had multiplayer capability, a feature that is completely missing from the PC port, though I can't even find any multiplayer footage from the Xbox version. Did you play it? Was it fun? Please tell me if you did. Thinking about it, I assume that's what these callouts up here were relative to, the multiplayer I mean, but really no use in single player other than just being there. Also, don't mind the black bars, that's just how this game looks on PC. I'll zoom in for the cutscenes though, I promise. Armed and Dangerous is one of the best Xbox titles, at least in my opinion. You might not agree with that assessment, but I think it can be agreed that Armed and Dangerous is one of the most memorable video games of all time. But it's been quite some time since I've revisited it, so I decided to give it another shot to see if it gives me the same warm fuzzies it used to back in the day. So let's get to it. Armed and Dangerous is a third person shooter set in the lands of Milola. Where is that? I'm not sure, but the game assures me that it's based on a true story, and I'm not one to argue with a factual statement, and would a video game lie? I mean, really. The game drops you into the story almost immediately with a cutscene. It also lets you know what the Book of Rule is, that being the most important thing in this story. Your three noble heroes are on a search for someone in the Burgog Wastelands. Those heroes are the player character Roman, the most normal character in this game, posh robotic Roman centurion Q, a machine gun slinging soldier who gains sentience due to his intense love of tea, and as a result always makes time for it, and Jonesy, a mole man from Scotland who is Roman's best friend and serves as the team's explosives expert. Jonesy. Defuse the bomb. Uh, easy, fella. We'll have you out of there in no. Duck! Three very unlikely heroes on their way to see the last major hero character in Armed and Dangerous. Rexus, the incredibly wise and powerful mage who coded the Book of Rule to look like a book on basket weaving. That was years ago now, though, and Rexus is now just a smelly little hermit living in an igloo. If you'd like to know more about Armed and Dangerous' backstory, the manual actually includes a full two and a half page story of Milola, which includes multiple wars, why the Kings of Forge end up as incredibly evil, then a complete dumbass between generations, a full ethnic cleansing, the development of the water-based engine called the Lime Dixon in this universe, and all sorts of other crazy events. You also get backstories for the heroes, and stories for the game's various guns as well. They put a good amount of effort into the lore of this game. Hell, this game has better world-building lore and characters than Ruby. But as for why the Lionhearts are here, Roman has a plan to steal the Book of Rule from the Iron-Fisted King Forge and restore peace to the lands of Milola, but they need Rexus who camouflage the book so Forge wouldn't be able to decipher it. But tick-tock on the clock, the monks of Wildwood are working on decoding the book, and if they do, it's curtains for everyone. Unfortunately, the armies of Forge were right on the tail of the Lionhearts, and after a mishap on Rexus's part, they kidnap him and leave the Lionhearts for dead. Thankfully, Q saves the boys, and the three immediately set out to rescue Rexus and pull off the ultimate heist. You're handed a simple Hawking's rifle, told to go collect some ticker bombs from the local pub, and to begin your mission. So let's get the most obvious thing out of the way really quick with Armed and Dangerous. It is fucking awesome ugly. All the models, backgrounds, environments, it, well, everything is not particularly pleasant to look at, but also maybe that was an intentional choice? This is essentially fantasy Great Britain, after all. The second thing you'll notice is the absolute star-studded cast this game has. Brian George, John Mariano, Rob Paulson, Darren Norris, Kath Suchi, Pat Fraley, Jeff Bennett, and fucking Tony J. All the expense must have went to the voice acting for this game, and it shows. All of the VA is stellar and matches the characters perfectly, and all are very, very pleasant to listen to. Back to the game though, you'll fight your way to the local pub, which serves as the game's save point, as well as an armory for the player that helps stock you up with guns, explosives, and the needed ticker bombs if the mission calls for them. In the first pub, you'll pick up the weapon that'll most likely be your bread and butter for the entirety of this game, the Fleming's machine gun, which can solve up to 100 problems a minute. So let's get the best part of Armed and Dangerous out of the way now. It has the best arsenal of guns I've seen in a video game. While it does have some typical normal guns, the craziness gets cranked hard with some of the later weapons. Complementing the more normal guns would be the Cyclops sniper rifle, which 
well, it's your typical sniper rifle, scope, and all the heavy penetration capabilities as well. After these three first guns, well, the party really gets started. The Vindaloo rocket launcher, which fires two, or four if you pick up the special upgrade, homing rockets that immediately fly to its target and give them a new butthole, Gurner personal mortar, which is essentially a modified tuba that fires massive explosive shells, and lest we forget, the best weapon that's ever been created in any video game ever. The Land Shark Gun. Literally exactly what it says on the tin. It fires a rapidly maturing shark that devours a target, then moves on to the next one. An incredibly useful gun, for sure. Honestly, every gun has its uses in this game, and you're never really at a disadvantage with whatever three you choose to carry. Not to be outdone, though, your thrown weapons are just as over the top as your primary weaponry. You'll mainly be using the stick grenade, which, going by the manual's description, isn't a sticky grenade so much, but really an explosive frisbee that puts out spikes in flight and sticks into your target. Like that one scene from that one movie. I like to stick a grenade a lot since if you hurl it at foes and they get stuck with it, all the surrounding people begin screaming in terror and running around. You also have the Guy Fox Trader Bomb, which makes all enemies in the AoE turn on each other. Pretty useful for mass groups of foes. Top Sea Turvy Bomb, which flips the world upside down, making enemies fall before you reinvert the gravity and let them plummet back to the earth, immediately liquefying their organs on impact. Then there's the Knockout Bomb, which is just a boxing glove that pops foes into the stratosphere. And best of all, the miniature black hole, which actively sucks everything around it into its depths. Amazing for clearing out entire enemies, even can pull you towards it with how strong it is. Not sure if it can kill you though. That's the arsenal, and you'll definitely have a ton of fun using every wacky weapon this game throws at you. All of them are pretty viable, too. Returning to the story, though, the Lionhearts launch a daring raid to rescue Rexus, but nearly lose him to the biting cold. Thankfully, Q is, as always, a quick thinker, and salvages the situation. Good idea, mate. What? I've seen this done before. He'll split open the dead beast's stomach and stick Rexus amongst the warm entrails. Should keep him warm for at least a day. Right. I'll be off here vomiting. No, that's not necessary. Just stick it in there. Lionhearts head on to liberate Fjorkin Village, and let's talk about gameplay a bit here. Armed and Dangerous is a very fast-paced third-person shooter. You'll be running and gunning for pretty much the entirety of the game, mainly because standing still is a death sentence due to the sheer amount of enemies set against you. You'll gun down thousands of the King's grunts, as well as his more experienced officers who typically tote machine guns. In addition to the fast-paced running and gunning, the gameplay will be broken up by the occasional turret section, which I could talk about now, because after liberating the Fjorkin Village, you then have to defend it from an army of the King's men. These sections are... okay. I typically don't like turret defense missions, but these ones are actually pretty fun. You have a rapid-fire machine gun on top of a longer-range mortar, which can take out soldiers from quite the distance away. The battlefield will typically be sprinkled with explosive barrels to help you fend off the invaders, too. All in all, these are probably the least worst turret sections I've ever played in a video game, ever. After defending the Fjorkin village, our heroes advance to the lands of Midden, agreeing to save this Welshman's sacred lamb in exchange for details on how to get the hell out of here into the mountain village. Daddy! Bah! 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 Right, that's enough. Well, we fulfilled our part of the bargain. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Wow, that was fun. Ready? What about Rexus? Oh, uh, we shall be hearing from him any moment now. Upon arriving in the mountain village, they meet Lily, who is a very big fan of theirs, and they also hear the Majorcan prophecy, which basically paints them as the saviors of the lands, even though nobody believes it. The best part of the Dick Turpinite section is that it introduces the best side characters. It's okay to weep for all the plants we've loved and lost. I'm not. But weep today and fight tomorrow! This is a war we're going to win! Death to the Saladators! Death to, to the Saladators! Shrub Patrol. A bunch of robots made militant by Rexus. Their only goal is to protect all vegetation in the area. They're a constant force in this game too, even helping you during the tower defense missions. In addition to them though, your boys, Q and Jonesy, will accompany you on certain missions. They're decently competent, so you don't have to worry about them too much. More so because while Q and Jonesy can die, they just respawn next mission. Q and Jonesy can be healed, but I think they have to pick up med packs to restore their health, which can be accomplished semi-easily by running them 
over them. You can give some limited orders to your mates, but it's basically just guard me or guard this location in specific, so nothing too robust. And if your boys do die, the only real penalty is that you just lose a tiny bit of your overall bounty if they do perish. Oh, it's not a big deal, but after every level, the bounty of the Lion Hearts raises based on how much destruction you've caused to Forge's armies and buildings. Though you will lose points for shooting innocent animals and blowing up civilian houses, as well as your comrades dying, like I mentioned. It's a small touch, too, but the posters that are posted throughout the game also reflect your current score. I really like little things like this. Probably should have mentioned it earlier, but basically every armed and dangerous mission genuinely gives you a few objectives to accomplish before you're declared victorious. They're typically super simple, like blowing stuff up, killing stuff, but also occasionally you'll have to rescue peasants from the clutches of the king's men. Armed and Dangerous features the best escort missions in gaming because the peasants you save can't die, and they're also limply tethered to you till you drop them off at their respective homes. Later missions give you a jetpack to fly around with, and I'm delighted to report they behave exactly the same when you're flying around. After the Lionhearts have escaped from the armies pursuing them at the Dick Turpin village, they head out to find the Lady of the Pond, who holds the keys of Zardoz, which will give our heroes access to the Wildwood Abbey, which is where the Book of Rule is currently being interned. What? Well, what did he, what did he just do? So the Lionhearts blast their way there and quickly work on retrieving the book. After thumbing through the book, the Lionhearts realize they'll need Lily to fully execute the Majorcan prophecy and head out to find her, her and her grandfather having headed to their vacation home in Zitawala. You must leave now, for you are in great danger here. You okay? Unfortunately, they're besieged by the king's very own son, but our lion hearts use their guile to escape, even kidnapping Forge's son in the process. Stay quick! Throw me a gun and put your hands in the air! Oh! Damn it! All this tricking book! Our heroes attempt to find a way to see Twala, but it seems to have a bad reputation of some kind. Hey, do you know the way to Zitwala? Zitwala? Ah! After finding Zitwala's location, though, you find out why it's so reviled. It's a leper colony. People. Lisa, can you kick this ball with me? All my brothers and sisters are no longer with us. Sure I can, lad. And you can call me Rome. Okay, thank you, Mr. Roman. I'll be goalie. Here I am. Okay, kick it, Mr. Roman. Go for the goal! Go! Okay, so let's address it. The real reason to play Armed and Dangerous outside the really fun gameplay and awesome guns is that it's actually fucking hilarious. It's not often I'll say a game is funny, and even rarer, I can't think of many games where that's the main draw. I can think of plenty of games that try to be funny, like Borderlands, and fail for sure. Armed and Dangerous is one of the few that actually succeed. The jokes of this game pretty much hit constantly. I was rolling how funny it was at times. After defending Zitwala from Forge's armies, the Lionhearts come to find out that Lily has been kidnapped by the forces of King Forge, and they have to rescue her. Negotiations for Lily fail, however, after a long series of misunderstandings between the King and the Lionhearts, so our intrepid foursome blasts their way out of Forge's castle and steal a Zeppelin to escape. The Zeppelin ends up taking too much damage during the fleeing, though, and our heroes, on top of two random characters, end up crashing in a massive desert, leaving them in quite the dire circumstance since they're lacking in food, and as Rexa says, the desert is gigantic, covering over 50k square miles. What will our heroes do now? Need... food... need... water... but there's nothing to eat, nothing... <laughs> I want to take a second to compliment this game on its difficulty curve. In these later stages of the game, more advanced enemies begin showing up, like jetpack troopers, goliaths, and these mini walkers begin showing up almost constantly, in addition to the basic troops that populate the earlier levels. Every battle at this point feels like a brutal upwards fight that requires your wits and reflexes, as well as good use of your guns to attain victory. I died a good many times, but it never really felt unfair or overly difficult. I mainly died because I was an idiot, or because I stood still too long. Shockingly, as well, the controls actually complement the chaos of these fights really well, being loose and quick to move. All of your weapons also complement this style too, since they have some way to compensate for the incredibly frantic gameplay. Lock-ons, massive areas of effects, or just sheer amounts of bullets all help to counter inaccuracy caused by the fast movement. Movement even feels fine with the jetpack, which I definitely wasn't expecting that at all. The gameplay here is immaculate for certain, probably some of the most fun I've ever had with a third-person shooter. 
Back to our heroes, though. They all catch a very lucky break. Lily actually managed to escape Forge's clutches while they were inadvertently causing a diversion for her. She met up with the Shrub Patrol and followed the Lionheart's distress signal. Doubly so. There was a village just beyond the hill, so our heroes are saved. The two randos, however, were not as lucky. After this lucky break, our heroes fly to Jerosa, where the Majorcan prophecy can finally be fulfilled, and you're put into the very final mission, one of those turret segments. The king knows his time might be up, so he sends every last man available in his army to take the lion hearts down once and for all. I know I said earlier this game felt completely fair throughout, but this last mission... My god, this last mission is actually brutal and feels entirely unfair. I absolutely died more here than throughout the entirety of the game. All I could say is good luck when you get here, because I barely managed to clutch this one out. At the climax of Armed and Dangerous, our hero successfully managed to fulfill the Majorcan prophecy, regrowing all the lost forest life of the lands and killing King Forge in the process, as well as destroying his empire entirely. This also installs Lily as the head of the new nation. She humbly asks Roman to follow her into politics, but he politely declines so he can keep fucking around with his boys. Instead, Prince Stig takes his place, and the game ends with a fun tavern song. Save the last pint for me, boys. Save the last pint for me. God damn, this game was a blast. Typically, when I think about playing an older game I haven't touched in forever, I get a little bit of anxiety over it not being as good as I remembered, but Armed and Dangerous was awesome. Yes, it's ugly as sin, but it makes up for it with amazing gameplay, a wacky arsenal of guns, and explosives, on top of being hilarious all throughout. It's rare to find a game that promises the funny, and actually delivers the funny. I'm kind of sad now that Planet Moon Studios didn't develop more original games, it's seemingly being only three titles, one of them being Armed and Dangerous, before they degenerated into cash grab license nonsense. I'll have to check the other two games out here for sure. Anyways though, as always, I'm Hades Manticore, and this here little channel will be City State Manticore. Leave a like and a comment if you loved Armed and Dangerous, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Goodbye.